Welcome into Friday Night Fever, as always, alongside Sammy Roebuck. I'm Matt St. Jean, and Sammy, another great night for football out in Mississippi. Always keeping us on our toes. I don't think I could say that enough. We just, <laughs> always. <laughs> you know, sometimes you go to a game and it's halftime. Sometimes, you know. and then you contemplate if you're going to wait 15 minutes, and then you decide not to. And then you, just, you learn that Baldwin's football stadium is not at their high school. Yeah, that's a Mississippi thing. In yeah. Tennessee, we have all of our football stadiums attached to our schools. It's Most always an adventure on Friday night. But without further ado, Sammy, we're going to get into our game of the week, the Dampier Bowl between Amory and Houston. This one was an absolute dandy and a blast. Pre-game college game day, did you see that picture? I did Oh, see my that God, picture. it was a blast. I Shout out to Houston. Set the bar pretty high for future game of the weeks for Friday Night Fever Countdown. But let's get Love into it. the game right now. The Friday Night Fever Game of the Week is sponsored by Game Day Haircuts. And look at that sign. Isn't that How precious? precious. Oh, oh, that's what I was so going to say. Cute. It's so cute. Just pure art. The first quarter of this game was a bunch of what could have been. First drive, Amory knocking on the door. Charleston, viva la French. Got the carry. Oh, get off me, Charles Play. Vicious stiff arm into the end zone, but a flag erased it. Amory would have to settle for a field goal. Houston's first drive, Jamal Cooperwood with the carry, found a hole, a couple moves, a couple missed tackles, and he's off to the races down the sideline. 20, 10, gets clipped at the two, but the referee says he's in. However, hold the phone, flag on the play. Two touchdowns called back in the first quarter. It was three to nothing Amory after the first quarter. Look at this play. Jeterian Ware to Allen Dobbs near the sideline. Made a catch and a nice move. Panthers into topper territory. On third down now, Ware looking for Isaiah Smith. And oh my gosh, <laughs> obliterated. I Jamal scared. Cooperwood has Smith singing Coldplay. I saw stuff. <laughs> Big hit on third down. Toppers forced to punt. Next Houston drive. Steel Brooks handed off to Jordan Pratt. He's obviously been watching some Derrick Henry film because that stiff arm was mean. Scampered deep into Panther territory, which set up this. Cooper Wood, after a missed touchdown and a big hit, finally found Paydirt late in the second quarter. Houston went up 7-3. to three. However, Amory returned the ensuing kickoff for a touchdown to take the lead right back. As of right now, we're in the fourth quarter. The Panthers... Up 17 to 7. Houston won this game last year, so Brooks obviously wanting to take the damn Pier Bowl back to his household. Although I'm told that his parents sat on the Houston side tonight, which obviously motivated Ooh. him to uh, get this win even more. Sammy. Boonville hosted Ripley tonight on this beautiful Friday night. Look at these little cheer camp cheerleaders oh, showing off their skills. Cuteness. Oh, look at those jerseys. <laughs> they also honored National First Responders Day. Let's get into it, though. Boonville clicks off to what they think is going to be the opposing team, but they pick it up themselves in the red zone, mm. putting them up for a nice little spot right there because that was fourth down for them originally. Then we had a next play, Noah Gillen passes and finds Joey Willington in the corner, oh. tiptoeing in for a touchdown right there for six, and the kick was good. So 7-0, and oh. and the crowd loved that one, let me tell you. Tigers ball, Ty Long looking to find a receiver, but finds oh. a Blue Devil instead, interception, Can you say scoops fever it up. Five. That's fever a beautiful five. play, and they were excited about it for a reason. Let's see that final score. 21 to 14, oh. Ripley still came back. Heartbreaker. Still came back. It's one of those ones where, you know, you shed a tear. Right. Shed a tear for yeah. them. I was yeah, rooting for them. You know, they were going for the upset. You know? Didn't quite get there. All right, let's go to the next game. Shannon facing off against Calhoun City. I think, Sammy, you take this one too. We're in the boneyard tonight. It was a beautiful night for football. We just can't get over this weather. Just can't get over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so hot. We've been sweating so much. It was just nice Shannon to be cool Shannon versus Calhoun there. City. Looking, looking, uh -oh. running. Look at him go, just breaking away. And that's Jamari Bailey. It's just the big untouchable. Man. A big man he returns that for a touchdown. It was a big man touchdown. Point was, uh, conversion was good. Hopping into this one though, Shannon QB finds Tracian Spurs. 
and it's good for an eight yard gain, but they had to punt the ball after that. Had to punt the ball after that. Calhoun City QB Williams finds Cameron Crutchfield, and look at him fighting those defenders. Nine yard completion right there. First down, Calhoun City. Williams takes the snap again, finds Crutchfield again, and this is a 40 yard touchdown. Pretty but good the catch right there. <laughs> but the PAT was no good. Only giving him six for that play. Let's see that final score. Ooh, Shannon Ooh. came back on him. <laughs> he really did. Oh, they came really back. Did. 38 to 20 in the fourth quarter. All right. Let's go to Pontotoc, Itawamba, visiting the Warriors in a 4A showdown. Warriors with the ball. Carner Armstrong dropping back to pass. The lefty found Miller Finn, and he is Ooh. buried. Dakeen Bailey and friends right there. A couple and plays friends. later, Armstrong up top, deep ball, touchdown, wow. Nick Townsend. Celebrated a little bit too early. That could have been embarrassing. 21-7 uh, <laughs> to 7, Itawamba at that point. Indians trying to answer Ty Davis outside to Thomas Klein, the tight end. And he gets a stiff arm right there. Get off me. And then another guy, Ooh. get off me. And another guy, get off me. And finally oh corralled goodness. out of bounds. Good game. Great effort on that one. Next play, Davis trying to find Klein again. Overthrew it, though. And oh, my gosh. Wow. Almost intercepted, and that's too bad for the Warriors because later on in that drive, Davis found Lath Holiday in the end zone for six. Warriors, they are uh, pretty good. They stay undefeated, 49-7. to seven. And we're heading to Nettleton Tigers travel to North Pontotoc to face the Vikings tonight. Look at how nice they look, sharply dressed. Oh. It's homecoming night like many people, but now let's get into some Oh, the football. referee almost got laid out. <laughs> I know how that feels. You gotta look out. I know how that swivel. feels. <laughs> QB hands off to Drew, number seven, Drew Winfun, who is just Ooh. absolutely Ooh. stacked. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> Nettleton defense. takes over later. QB Braylon Williams looking finds Aiden Pettigrew. Oh! Woo! Right there on the sidelines. Look That's at that. That's a small footwork. window right That's there. That's just crazy right yeah. there. Same pass play. Passes too, but this time Jaden Hawkins, and he's just right in on that sideline. Look at that yeah, footwork. You know, it's just Take, keeping it going, keeping it going. TD pass right here. Look at him running all the way. I foreshadowed that a little bit for you. Touchdown, and that was Xavier yep. Dilworth in nice. the end zone. The kick was good, seven and zero oh. at that point. Let's see that final score. Nettleton, Ooh, 122 to 15. Tigers are kind of rolling this year. I like Tigers it. Tigers are rolling. And Fierce we found out that Shannon, they won 50 to 20. Tupelo, they stay undefeated. That's a first district win for the Golden Wave. Nice, nice. Now they face the gauntlet coming up. They've got Oxford next week, and I have it on good authority that that's going to be game of the week. Game of the week. But don't tell anybody. We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> West Point, they take care of business against Lafayette. That's also a district battle, 59 to 35. And Louisville, big Louisville, they're trying to bounce back after that loss to Starkville last week. They're looking good, 21 to 8 in the fourth quarter. What else we got here? Saltillo, a barn burner for the Tigers. Woo. Sending Cleveland Central back to the <laughs> Delta with an L right there. That a baby Saltillo, 28 to 27. New Albany, they scored 66 last week, Sammy. 66, Yeah, but only 17 Only tonight. 17, but it's good enough to win. And it's good enough. Yeah, a win so, is a win. Yeah, a Trent win Hammond, win. Uh, they had, he, uh, <laughs> he had the defense cooking this week, so 17 to 7. <laughs> get back East Webster, Maybe they beat East Union. That's been a little bit of a rivalry this year. Well, it wasn't tonight. Or, yeah, not, it wasn't not, tonight. Not so much so tonight. Uh, the Urchins, sorry, you guys. know, yeah, sorry, East Union. We, we love you. We do. We love you, but yeah. 40, 49 to nothing. All right, you know what else we love? Um, we love cheers. We yeah. love cheers. We do. And we love teams. We and do. we love of the week. So of when we week. combine them all into one. Oh, it's so fun. What is it? Cheer team of the week. Let's go. <laughs> the Friday Night Fever Three. Cheers Square. We've got a lot more action coming your way. What's better than a rivalry, Sammy? Anything? I don't think so. I don't think so. A either. close rivalry a game. A close rivalry yeah. game. Keeps you Indeed. On, on we the do edge like... of your seat. Mmm. Yes. But we don't last year, this rivalry game that's coming up was close, but 
The final score was 70 to 58, Sammy. The battle for 371, wow. Mantachi and Morful, midway through the first quarter, it was scoreless. It's like a miracle. Battle of the But offenses. not anymore. Luke Ellis took the snap and powered in for the first touchdown of the evening. Morville trying to answer. Brody Thompson threw a dime to Parker Harris for a big game, but the Troopers couldn't capitalize on the drive. Still 7 to nothing at that point. Later in the half, 14 nothing. Mantachi. Hunter Hester got the end around. He's got some space. He's got some blockers, and he's got a touchdown. Mustangs were up 21 to nothing at that point. They went on to win 42 to 7. Big time showdown in 6A between Starkville and Madison Central. The Jacks are jumping on the early upset. The upset early. First drive of the game. Starkville thought they were done, but with Jake Norris, Ooh. they're back in for the red zone. QB keeper takes it. Yellow Jackets. Oh, oh no, oh, Trey. Here we go. Oh, no. oh the way maybe oh. look at him go Jayden oh on, on the heels yeah. heels right Pick there six, baby <laughs> yellow jackets get a touchdown back but jaguars back on the attack and let's see that final score big upset here wow look at that 41 to 21 first loss of the season but Madison you have to Central. think you have to think <laughs> that game's gonna happen later it will. Playoffs, maybe? Yeah. All right. 41-21. Yeah. <laughs> Big win for Madison Central. TCPS, they beat Faulkner. Biggersville, yeah, they're, they're good. They're, 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 they're big you good. Know, they're, they're big you good. You know, I don't really have to expand on, expand on that too much. They're good. 53-6. to six. Ashland beat Smithville, 28-20. to 20. What else do we got? Bruce in Nanawaya. Nanawaya, they beat them. Vardaman, oh, yeah, Rams. <laughs> yeah, Rams, 28-21, and Okalona. This game was tied late in the fourth. They pull it out against a very good Byers team, so way to go, Chieftains. We've got Mora versus Oxford. Oxford takes that win, 43-8. Tishamingo loses to South Pontotoc, 28-21. Alcorn Central just didn't have a shot against Baldwin, 63-0. Right, Crazy. and uh, we go back to our, our pickers. They were... 2-0 so far. We don't know the final for Amory Houston, true. but they got all their they got all their games we're right. We're sitting here. We're got, waiting. Yeah, they got all their games right. So good for good for them. <laughs> good for them. Oh, they split against Shannon and Calhoun City. Two pitch Shannon, two pitch Calhoun City. So way to go, guys! And thank you again for doing that. That was wonderful. I had so much fun. Speaking of fun, band of the week. Band of the week. We love them. Yeah. Let's see it. Okay. The Friday Night Beaver Band of the Week is sponsored by Northeast Mississippi. Back, we have a final for that Amory Houston, our game of the week. Amory won 31 to 13, so Brooks Dampier, a happy camper, and he's going to have the bragging rights at Thanksgiving. All right, Ethan Foster has been standing by for quite some time. He's down in Caledonia. Ethan, what you got? Well, Matt, Sammy, Caledonia not quite having the season that they had last year. And Aberdeen, well, they had only lost one game coming into tonight. So let's see how both teams fared when it was all said and done. In the third quarter, Aberdeen up 12-0. Jermaine Strong rolled out to his right, got away from a would-be tackle, and he found his receiver deep down the field. He got at least 10 to 15 yards. Eventually, they got him down, though. That got the Bulldogs in the red zone, but they could not make anything out of that drive. Third quarter, still up 12 to nothing. Aberdeen punting from their own territory, and Caledonia blocked the punt. They blocked it. That gave the Cavaliers pretty good field position, if you ask me. I think they thought so, too. Of course, the Cavaliers taking over in home territory. In the red zone, though, quarterback handoff to Ladarius Smith, and he got in. He got in. Strolled in nice and easy like it was Sunday morning. That led to seven for the Cavaliers, of course. That cut the lead to five. But, listen, that was in the third quarter, and that was sadly the last score of the game. Aberdeen Bulldogs win it 12-7, to a defensive bout if you've ever seen one. They moved to 4-1, and one, and Caledonia, they fall to 1-4. and four. Tough night for the Cavaliers, and a hang on as long as you can for the Aberdeen Bulldogs. Now, Caledonia, they've got Corinth here at home next week. 
and the Aberdeen Bulldogs will travel to Amory to take on the Panthers. Until next time, reporting live in Caledonia, I'm Ethan Foster for WTVA 9 Sports. All right, over in Columbus, a battle for supremacy in the friendly city in the first district win of the season for these two teams. Falcons and the New Hope Trojans. Let's do these pretty quick. Final scores, 8-3, to three, the Columbus Falcons. Hey, Josh Pulfus, stand up, buddy. That's a big win for them. And just a reminder, Giant of the Week. Voting opens tomorrow. Four shall enter, one shall win.